Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 9th, 2019 edition of the Sands and the Storms on Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Sevalde, Germany. Last week, Guy observed a new kind of scan in his honeypots that appears to originate from the Mirai botnets or some of its successors. And well, again, targeting DVRs, but this time it looks like it's more going sort of for web application vulnerabilities. In particular, it's looking for the mount custom product definition file. Not absent what it's kind of looking for, but but uh, if you have any more details, uh, please let us know. There are a couple of sort of tweets about uh, some activity from Cranoise and others. But uh, well, uh, what I reported before, uh, Mirai sort of keeps on changing, keeps on expanding the overall arsenal of vulnerabilities it's scanning for. And yes, what we all were waiting for somewhat has happened and we now have a Bluekeep exploit module in Metasploit. Of course, uh, this uh, did very much lower the threshold of attackers targeting your systems with this exploit. You had plenty of times now to apply patches and for sure you know, exploits have been developed and have been available in commercial products for quite a while now. Now, this exploit isn't quite as straightforward as some other Metasploit modules by default. It it will just tell you if a system is vulnerable or not. You have to apply additional configurations based on the operating system you are targeting. It currently works with the 64-bit versions of Windows 7 and Windows 2008 R2, according to a blog post released by Rapid7. Now, uh, one word of caution, if you're using this exploit module in internal penetration tests, uh, there is a good chance that you will actually trigger a blue screen if you are not running this module correctly or if your exploit is interrupted, for example, by network issues. And many Gmail users have reported over the last few weeks a sudden increase in calendar spam. The way this works is that if you receive via Gmail a calendar invite, it's automatically added to your calendar. And this is often used then to spam you essentially with event notifications that are then triggered by these calendar events. Google has released a help document on how to deal with some of these issues. Now, the easiest thing to do here is just to disable automatic invitations. The way you do this in Google Calendar is to go to Settings and then in the General tab, click on Event Settings and that's where you're able to not allow automatic invitations for, to be added to your calendar. So you have to add them manually. And the XM mail server appears to be the gift that keeps on giving for the bad guys latest vulnerability. Now we got a little bit more details about this and it is a vulnerability in the TLS handshake. The feature that's being exploited here is server name indication. With server name indication, the user is able to indicate what host name they would like to connect to. It's a very common and pretty much standard feature in TLS, even though probably not as important for mail servers as it is, for example, for web servers. A proof of concept has been made available. Also, XM has released an ACL that you can apply that should block the exploit. And then of course, you could always just turn off TLS support within XM, which is certainly not what you want to do. And also XM states that this workaround is not recommended. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.